they were gonna add a lot of photos together, cut them out, blend them all together, add another elements, and then we're gonna color grade everything. Hey there guys, my name is Ali and today we're gonna go through this image step by step. It went viral on Instagram and like many people were asking me how you made it so I'm gonna go through it step by step. Okay, the first thing I wanna like... This is how it actually started. It started with just like basic colors and idea but then the idea completely changed. So because some people were asking how I, how I would start like the edit, this is how it actually starts. Okay, the first layer I added was, was this one. Let's close that one for now. This one, it was like that. I cut it. Then I added this one. It was like that. Cut. Then I added a background. And I added an element on the left here. Then I added these ones, which are like the mountains, like the horns. Then I started like adjusting the color and everything for everything. And finally, I color graded everything and moved this a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna go through this like step by step and try to recreate it. Okay, so I'll close this one now. And let's go. Okay, this is the first photo. The first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna use the like quick selection tool. And then I'm just gonna like select everything I want to delete, something like that. But then our selection is not very clear. I hold Alt to minus selection. I'll minus the, this area, that one, this one. Then I'll go with the like the lasso tool, zoom in, and then I'll like fix the problems in the selection. And like add the model and everything. However, I did this, and after you're done with it, what you wanna do is you'll press like when you're done with your selection, just press layer mask. This will appear to you. So what you do is, when standing on the layer mask, just press Ctrl I. It will invert it. Now we have our selection. Okay, let's add our first, second photo. This one. I'll add it. I'll move it to the left. Put it below. Then I'm gonna also let's close this one for now so you can see. And also I'm gonna use the quick selection method. And I just wanna get rid of everything. Okay, like that. Okay, thank you Photoshop. Like, did great job for us. Control I, make sure you rasterize your files to make them faster. Now we have a problem. I'll show you if I add a black layer behind that. You see what do we have here? We have like something behind the trees. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna stand on my layer, go to select something called color range, and then I'm gonna pick up this color. Make sure the fuzziness is not like so low, not so high, I'll go something like actually high like that. Okay, now it will select the color range in that area. So I'm gonna stand on my layer mask and then I'm gonna use my black brush, 100% opacity, and I'm just gonna get rid of the black, like sorry, the white areas here with the black brush. Okay, now I'm gonna close this, open this one. Okay, now I'm gonna take this layer, I want to make like a duplicate of it below, so I'm going to hold Alt and drag it, hold Shift also so it's in a straight line, and then I'm going to press Ctrl T, right click, flip vertical, now it's upside down, I'll put it something like that, and then on the layer mask, using a very soft brush on the layer mask, make sure the hardness is zero, and I'll just erase the edges so they blend somehow together. I have this white area, I don't know where it came from, okay. Okay. Now this is like, it looks like, you see this line is opposite of that line. This line is opposite of that line. I don't want that actually, it looks bad. It will catch the eyes that I just like copied everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unlink my mask here. Stand on the layer, press Ctrl T, then I'll go to the warp tool. And then I'm just gonna play around with this one, like increase its size, decrease from some places, increase, like, 
play around so it's not the exact copy and not only that also I'm gonna go to the clone stamp tool I'm gonna hold alt and stamp from here alt click will stamp from here or option if you're using Mac then I'm gonna add a little bit of this area here let's make a more subtle one something like that then I'm gonna stamp from here put here you can even lower the opacity stamp from here add here stamp from here add here stamp from maybe down add to the top stamp from the left add to the right so now you're creating some sort of variation so it looks like it's a different rock okay remember the black layer we added behind I will keep it and every now and then I'll open it to show you this problem sometimes when you have a layer when you cut it the edges are left so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand on that layer using a black brush I'm gonna get rid of this one then I'm gonna stand on that layer get rid of this one and that one also because like and you can also try white to see if there is anything black okay good now let's start by dragging our third photo which is that one okay this one we'll put it like let's say top left then using also the quick selection tool I'm just gonna select it like that okay then I want to fix that one so I'm gonna hold alt to minus and then I'm gonna minus that one using my polygonal lasso tool so I don't lose this area when and yeah also that one I'm holding alt before I start my selection okay then I'm gonna press layer mask okay if it gives you the opposite just control I remember it okay now I want to rasterize this one because if I press ctrl T right click work I'll get an error it must not be a smart object so I'm gonna right click rasterize layer okay actually I don't like this area and here you see if I open the black we have that line also so I'm gonna stand on the layer mask and just using the brush I'm gonna paint here to get rid of that line and I don't like this area so I'm gonna just like fix it like that something like that we'll see what we're gonna do with it paint black and we'll see what's gonna happen with this one okay now I'm gonna stand the layer itself I'm gonna press ctrl T then I'm gonna go right click work what work does it gives you like nine separate uh, squares where you can move around your photo the way you want okay I want this one to be something like that then I want to bring that one to the back. I want this to be like pointing somewhere. Yeah, something like that. But then I want more of the water to appear. So I'm going to move the water a lot up. Something like that. Okay, I guess this is good. Let's just like move it from the top a little bit more. Okay. I'm, I'm like happy with that result okay but then we had this problem because we moved it some of it like went to the left so I'm gonna press ctrl T and just increase its size a little bit something like that until it covers what's like the empty part okay now the problem we're facing is that let's close this one we have like the guy's head appearing so like I'm sorry I have like to <laughs> remove his head but I'm gonna use 100% opacity I'm gonna use the clone stamp tool and I'm just gonna clone some of the water here and just add it in the place of his and her head something like that okay and then I'm gonna bring it back okay now we can see them okay good okay for this area now if you see it's like sometimes the selection when you use like something like that and you make a selection it's it's too sharp so to fix that just stand on the layer mask use the blur tool and just oh, make sure you're on the layer mask not on the layer because it's completely different on the layer mask you blur the edges it will be a little bit more faded so it gives it more of a natural look however if you have time and you want to like make it like super good you can go to your brush and I would use that one I guess it's like built in photoshop and just very softly using white and black I change between white and black using the X button on my keyboard so white will bring back so you can use a very small one and just like bring back some like that then switch to black delete some bring back some delete some something like that make some variation so it looks like more natural 
Okay. The last photo we're gonna bring, which is the, like the background. I wanted some sort of a background which is like open, like your eyes can see like from the beginning to the end of everything. So I choose that one because it's too wide. And then I made it even wider. Press the S. And bring it to the bottom. Right click. Rasterize. I don't want to work with smart objects. Okay, you see now. Okay, wait. Let me open the black. You see, we have this sort of line. We need to fix it. It's that layer, I believe. Okay, so using a black brush. I'm just gonna paint on the mask. To get rid of it okay so now we have our full composition this is the first step i believe which is like compositing everything together the next step is gonna be how we're gonna like this one is like too yellow this one is orange this one doesn't have color it's like brown this one is like snow very bright blue scene so now the trick is like we need to make these as much as possible the four photos close to each other in the color and in the value and then add another layer of color grading all of them together to make them even blend more okay actually i'll change one thing about this one i don't like that like this is a pointy one this one up i don't like it so i'm just gonna take my polygonal lasso tool and i'm just gonna do something like that and paint black and then I'll take my blur tool on the layer mask and just blur the edge okay that's better I want it to be like some sort of like pointing I didn't I don't want the other like that thing up there okay so this is like now the hard part it's how we're gonna blend everything together okay let's start with like what, like, do we want them all to be faded and blue? Do we want them all to be like that yellow? Do we want them all to be that orange? Do we want them to be like that? No color. For me, I wanted everything to be like that yellow, but a little bit less saturated. So I'll start with this one. I'll go to Hue Saturation. Link it below. And I'll go to the Yellows channel. And I'm just gonna reduce the opacity a little bit. Okay, this is now like... Ignore everything. This is the color I want to be working with in this photo. This is like the color and the value. I don't want it brighter or darker. I don't want it like any different color. Okay, so now my target is to bring everyone to like this image. Okay, let's start with that one first. This one, like we said, it's, I believe this is more orange. This is more to the yellow. If you have problem like detecting colors, just open the color. And just let's pick from here. This one, you see, it's if this is yellow and this is red, this is in the middle, orange. Let's pick this one. You see this one, it moved up towards the yellow. This one, it will move down towards the red. This one will move up towards the yellow. Okay, so now we know this one is towards the red more. So we're going to go to hue saturation, link it below. And if you see from red to yellow, we move to the right. So I'm going to move this to the right a little bit. Okay, but now this one is too saturated. So I'm just going to reduce the saturation a little bit. Okay. Okay, now we're good. But one thing about this one, it's still not exactly like that one. However, we like made the colors exactly the same. But why is it different? It's different because this one is too contrasty. You see, it has a lot of dark areas and a lot of bright areas. But this one is more faded. It's more gray. So to fade this one, I'm just going to go to Curves Adjustment Layer. I'm gonna take my blacks, pull it a little bit up, and I'm just gonna brighten everything up a little bit. Because this is like the landscape, it's far away, so it needs to be brighter. It's more towards the sun, like, and there is fog in the way. Okay, so I guess this one now looks a lot like this one. I'll reduce the opacity of that one a little bit. Yeah, now they look like almost the same. Okay, let's go to that one. Okay, this one is actually two layers. I have the two layers now here. I'm gonna press Ctrl G to group them together. Then I'm gonna add a color balance layer, link it. This one doesn't have a lot of color. I wanna add color to it, so I'm gonna add some yellow. So now it has some yellow, maybe some green, a little bit of green, some red, a little bit of red. Okay. So now I added color to this one. You see the before and the after? 
Okay, let's jump to the final one, which is this one. This one is gonna be really hard. I'm not sure like I can make it like the last time. It took me like nine or ten layers just to like blend it, but we will do our best. Okay. The first thing, this one has two problems: a color problem and like a value problem. It's too faded and the color is completely different. So the first thing, let's try to fix the fade. I'm going to add a curves adjustment. Like when we want to fade something, we do that. So I'll try doing the opposite, which is doing that. Okay, now we're somehow unfading it. I'll pull a little bit the rest of it down. I'll pull some of the bright areas down, something like that. Okay, I guess now like brightness and fadeness wise, we're somehow good. Let's try the color. I'll try two ways. The first one, I don't know which one will work actually. I'll start with the hue saturation. I'll try to just change the color. Okay, horrible. Forget about that. Let's try the color balance now. Link it and let's try to add yellow. This one is much better. Some green, some red. Yeah, the red is actually doing good. Because it's taking away the cyan in the photo. <clears throat> okay. Okay, now it's looking actually good, but we can add like a hue saturation layer and reduce the saturation a little bit because I believe the green here is too strong. Okay. I'll just, sorry, link it below. I forgot to do that. It was affecting everything. If you don't link it below using alt click, alt or option click, it will affect everything below. So this is negative 20. If I make it black and white, you see it's also affecting the one below of it. So make sure you click that one or you alt click it. So it's linked below. Okay. I still believe I have a problem with this one. The upper part is too faded. However, if I make like a curves adjustment and I fade down everything, it will target the whole photo. But this one, I don't want it to be that black. So what I'm gonna do is, after I do that curves adjustment layer, I'm gonna stand on the mask, press Ctrl I. Now it's invisible. But however, if I paint white anywhere, it will bring it back to visible. So I'm gonna lower the opacity, fade my brush, make it zero hardness, and on the top areas, I'm just gonna like very softly paint with black. I'll just use even lower opacity. On the faded areas, I'm gonna make them like more clear and visible, something like that. Okay, if I, I don't want that to be dark, so I'm gonna press X, it will move me to black. Now if I paint, I will remove what I did. Okay. Now I made like, let's see if I darken the water actually. Okay, I, I'll color the water by itself, okay. Okay, let's say we, I wanna make like edits to the water only. I want the water to be very highly saturated. And I want it to be, what color? Like, more blue. Okay, I want this to only affect the water. So I made the adjustment. It's affecting everything. I'm gonna press Control I. Now it doesn't affect anything. I'll stand on the main layer. I'll use my selection and I will select the water along with that area, maybe. It's okay if you're on a different layer, but this is not okay. But on the water, like, and a different layer, it's okay. I'm gonna stand on that one. I'm gonna alt backspace to paint white with my foreground color. However, this will have like hard edges. So I'm just gonna take my blur tool and just blur the edges of that blue I made. Okay. So now I'm only affecting the water. You see? Only the water. So now I can actually make it like whatever color I want. I can play around with it. However, I can make also. Control Z. Okay, no, not that. Control Z. Yeah, I pressed Control Alt Z to go back again. Okay, let's say this same selection, I want to make it like, let's say, darker. But I only want to on the water. So after I do my thing, I'm just going to hold Alt, hold click, and drag that mask to that empty mask. You see, now I have the same mask. Now I'm only affecting the water. So I can make it like really dark or really bright or whatever. I just darkened it a little bit. Down. Okay, something like that. Okay. So now I guess we're done with the adjustment layers. However, there are some things in the environment we need to add, which is the fog. How the fog works is that the further away you go from the camera, 
the more fog you will have. Okay, so this is like the closest layer to the camera, this one. So below that, I will add a new layer. Then I'm gonna use a brush. Then I'm gonna use a white color. But in this one, the light I want, it will be orange. So I'll go to the orange and I'll make, like, if you go like that, it's fully saturated. You go like this, it's zero saturation. I'm just gonna go right a little bit, something just like that. Press OK. Now I'm having a brush. I'm gonna choose a cloud brush. Actually, I have some cloud brushes here. I'll link them in the description below. You can download them. You see what it does? Like, let's try it 100% first. It's just a cloud brush. So I'm gonna use like some something like 20% opacity and I'm just gonna add some fog like that like that always make it like bigger add some fog make it smaller add some even smaller add a little bit just like just like that okay I lost the color because I pressed alt and click so I want to make a layer only on top of that one so I'm gonna make a new layer I want to have like fog on that environment so using a new layer and using a, like a very orange, bright orange, I'm just going to add a lot of clouds like that. Okay, but then these clouds, I want them to be looking like they are on the floor. They are not like up like that. So I'm going to press Ctrl T and I'm going to hold Ctrl and Alt and Shift and just perspective it like that. I'm going to make it like that. Make this one bigger like this. Pull it up. So now the cloud seems like it's only on the ground. And reduce the opacity if it's too strong. Okay, now we did our fog. We did everything. Let's take that layer. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna, I'm standing on that layer now. I'm gonna actually hold shift. Click. Now I'm all on all the layer with all the adjustments. I'm gonna press control or command then J. It will make a duplicate of everything. Then I'm gonna press Ctrl E. Now I merged everything onto a new layer. Okay, let's see what we're gonna do with this. Okay, let's see. Ctrl T, right click, flip horizontal. I'm gonna rotate this one like that. Put it, rotate it even more, something like that. Press Enter. I'm gonna press Ctrl T, right click, warp. Then I'm gonna pull it like that, move it like this, pull it like this. Pull it something like that, okay. Then I'm gonna add a layer mask and using a black brush, hard one, I'm just 100% opacity, I'm just gonna, I clicked the hard one, I don't know what I have, okay. I'm just gonna erase these areas so I'm only left with that pointing thing. Okay, as you can see, the file is getting heavier. I'll show you a very nice way to get rid of it. To like fix it, sorry, I mean. Okay, let's say I want this one. I'll just adjust its like proportions, something like that. But then this one, I need to fix it actually. This one, I'm gonna press Ctrl T, right click warp. I need them to be like somehow facing each other. This one is facing a lot up. I want them to be like somehow opposite of each other. Let's go back to this one. Let's rotate it. I'll put it here actually, something like that. Then warp again. I'm gonna do this, do that. Move it from down. I need its base to be on the right. It's top to be on the right and the middle part to be in the left. So it looks like it's curved. Okay, I guess now we're done with these two. Okay, now my file is getting heavier. What can I do? I'll press the crop tool. Press only one click. You see, we have a lot of excesses outside. This is making our file heavier. So you can click on delete cropped pixels and click yes. It will delete everything outside of your canvas. But this is risky if you're like willing to use anything outside. But now I'm sure I'm not gonna use anything outside. So I did that. Okay, now I have this layer. You need to just like get rid of this. Okay. Now we have our first one. Something like that. Okay. Now let's do the second, third and everyone. I'll apply layer mask. This will make it like even faster. I'm gonna hold alt and copy it. 
put it below of it so it's behind control T make it like somehow smaller rotate it enter then hold alt drag it control T right click flip horizontal yeah, I need to put these actually below that one so it's behind that one okay I'm gonna merge these two actually so they are on one layer I merge by pressing control E if you click on something and press Ctrl E, they will be merged together if you're selecting different layers. Now this one, I want to move, I merged it, but I only want to move that one. So I'm going to take the remark key, I'm going to select this one, and then the move tool, and then move it a little bit to the left. However, I want to make them more bent, so I'm going to press Ctrl T, right click, warp again. I'm going to bend this one like that. I want it to be like more bent down. And I'm going to also bend this one like that. Okay, now we have our second ones. Let's copy them, holding Alt and moving them down. Control T, make everything smaller. Uh, even more smaller. More smaller, something like that. Okay, now... They look completely like messed up. I'm gonna use the lasso tool. I'm gonna cut them from here. Something like that. And I'm gonna press delete. Okay, now they look like they are standing on that thing. I'm gonna take the blur tool. And very slowly, I'm gonna blur the edge. Just like very subtle effect. Something like that. And still, we're gonna mix them even better. But after we're done with the composition, I'm gonna rotate them a little bit. Something like that. Then Alt, another copy. Make sure it's below of it, so it's behind it. Make it much smaller. Something like that, maybe. Okay, then Alt, and the final one here. I'll put it in the horizon line. But let me first fix that one. I'm going to stand on that one. Using an eraser, a very soft one. 0% hardness. I'm just gonna erase very slowly like the edge so it blends more with what's behind it and then let's take this last one and let's I'll take the sky this is the layer right okay so I'm just gonna stand on it and using my quick selection I'm gonna okay it doesn't work I'll use the magic wand actually I'll just select the sky then I'm gonna press ctrl shift i it will invert my selection now if I stand which layer is it this one, if I stand on it and erase, now I'm selecting the lower part, I could erase it. I'll move it down a little bit, even more, and then I'm gonna again erase, but very softly, the edges, something like that, so it blends with what's behind of it. Okay, something like that. Okay, now we're good, I guess. We made our, like, horns, but they still look fake. <clears throat> we have like several problems we need to fix in them. This is like the first one. Which one is that? Okay, I'll put them in order. This is the first one. Then second, third, fourth, fifth. We need to change these. Okay, the last one is too big compared to this one. The last one should be much smaller. Because it's further away. Okay. The first issue we have, let's start from back. Okay, the closest the object to us, the more it should be like strong and contrasty. The further the object, the more it should be faded. So on this last one, I'm going to press Ctrl M. It will open my curves adjustment. I'm just going to pull up a little bit to, so I can fade it. This one needs to be a lot faded, like it's so far away. Okay. This one, I'll leave it as it is, but I'll change one thing actually about it. The problem is that it's too bright from one side, too dark from the other side. I need like, I will put my sun or my light here. So what I need to do is, I need the inner area to be actually like bright. So I'm gonna take my dodge tool. And I'm gonna dodge these areas. It will make them brighter. Then I'm gonna stand on that one, dodge the middle parts. Then on the third one, 
also dodge the middle parts. First, first one, dodge the middle parts, and on the final one, also dodge like the inner area of it. Okay, this one is too faded but it's too close to the camera like look at this one and look at that one they look completely different although they are very close to each other okay so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna press ctrl m which will take me to the curves adjustment i'm gonna pull down the blacks to make it like harder then i'm gonna press ctrl b which will open the color balance layer i'm gonna add some yellow some red some more red more red, more red, some green, no, not some green, doesn't look good. Okay, now you see the difference, I'll press Ctrl Z, you see it was so blue and thus didn't match, now it match a lot more this one. Okay, let's do this for, uh, for the rest of everyone. I'll do one thing to be faster, I'm gonna like select them all, press Ctrl G, now they are grouped, I'm gonna go to the curves adjustment layer, I'm just gonna like, Oh, make sure it's linked then just like add some contrast to them then I'm gonna go to the color balance layer I'm gonna switch actually to the highlights in the highlights I want to have yellow and red in the shadows I want to have green maybe also some yellow and some red okay now it's good, but these are too contrasty, I believe, like the dark areas are too dark, the bright areas are too bright, it doesn't look so good. So I'm gonna stand on one by one in them, and I'm gonna take my burn tool, make sure it's mid-tones, and I'm just gonna burn. No, make sure it's highlights, actually, let's burn the highlights, because these are highlights. So, and I'm just gonna darken, like the bright areas at the edges, they are too bright. Okay, and let's go to the last one. This is, oh, this is the last one. So I was standing on the wrong layer. Okay, this is the last one. I'm gonna burn it. Okay, one thing I wanna do about the last one, I'm just gonna reduce its opacity. So it's even more faded. Even this one, I'll reduce the opacity a little bit. This one, a very slight opacity reduce. This one, like, yeah, a very also slight opacity reduce. Maybe also this one. No, I can't do this one because the skyline will start to appear at the back. I don't want that. Okay, so now we have our horns. We have everything. One thing I wanted to do actually was that like my model is exactly in the third. So I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm not going to move it. Okay, so now it's time to start like coloring everything. Okay, so let's start with where we want our light to be. In this photo, I want my light to be somewhere here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a curves layer and just make a lot brighter, something like that. And I'm going to link it below. Okay. The color of my light, I want it to be mixture of red and yellow. Opposite of blue is yellow. Okay, something like that. I reduced the opacity a little bit. Okay, but this is too strong. I'm gonna press Ctrl I. Now it's invisible. I'm gonna take a white brush. Make sure it's soft and make sure you're in a low opacity. And I'm just gonna like start painting from here where the light should be going. Something like that, something like that. Okay, and here it should be like strong. I'll actually reduce the opacity of this layer a lot. This layer, as you can see, it's down, so it's only affecting the background. I want it to affect everything. So I'm going to hold Alt, and I'm just going to copy it at the top of everything. So now it's affecting everything in my photo. Okay. What else could we do? I'm going to add a new layer. Take a brush. A white brush. This time. And I'm just with a very low opacity, I'm just gonna like add some light like this, some like this, like this, 
Just adding some light, change it to soft light. So now it's a very subtle effect and you can also like reduce the opacity to make it even like less of an effect. Okay. Now I want to add like some sort of a sun or a lens flare. So I'm going to press Control Alt Shift, which is Command, Option and Shift. Hold them, then press E. It will merge everything onto a new separate layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Filter, Render. You will find something called Lens Flare. So I'll make it zero first so I can see. It's too small, but I'm going to place my lens flare just in the middle of this one. Make it a little bit stronger, something like 30%. Press OK. So now I added my sun, but I don't want it to be on that sort of layer. So I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to create a new layer. Color it with black completely. Then I'm going to go to filter. Render. Lens flare. Now I have the lens flare exactly in the same position. Don't change it. Just press OK. Now you have it. Change this to screen mode. Now you have your lens flare here. Actually, the lens flare, if you see, it will add some sort of like circles. I don't want that. So I'm just going to use the eraser and just erase these circles, leaving only the one like in the middle here. Okay. One thing I want to change about the first layer, which is this one, like the background layer. Let's delete this. This one, the background, is that it's too blue, the sky. So I'm going to add a like a color balance layer. And just add some red and some yellow to everything. Not so much yellow, more red. Okay. Okay. Now you remember these layers? These ones? Okay, I'm going to add a layer on top of them. Then I'm going to take a brush. Then I'm just going to go some sort of like orange color. Orange reddish color. And then I'm just going to paint on their edges with that color. Okay, if I made a mistake, I'll use the eraser. Eraser by E. This is how I bring it. B for brush, E for eraser. And I'm just gonna paint a lot of orange here and there, something like that. That's too much. And maybe some on the external edges also. This one's too strong. I'm gonna delete it and I'm just gonna draw it again. Some on the external edges. And then I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay. Too strong, so I'm going to go to soft light. Okay, that's better. I'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit. Let's do the same with that one. Okay, when you like, if you want to bring a layer, I press Ctrl and click to get that layer. But now it's getting my lens flare because it has black everywhere. It's covering the whole photo. So what I do is I press that lock. And now I can control click, it will bring that layer. Gotta add a layer on top of it, link it below. Just color with orange, something like that. Change it to soft light and reduce the opacity if it's too strong. And let's do the same to that layer, this one. And soft light. Okay, so now we have like more orange, reddish, orange light in our photo. Okay. This one, I like. Yeah, these two. This is too contrasty, I believe. It's like too contrasty compared to this one. We try to make this one con more contrasty so it looks like it. But it's still a lot of difference between this and that. So I'm going to fade this one a little bit. So I'm going to go to curves. And I'm just going to pull the black up a little bit and pull the whites down a little bit, something like that. It's too colorful also compared to that. So I'm going to add like a hue saturation layer and just bring the colors a little bit down, something like that. Okay. Okay, now let's jump to our color grading. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do to color grade the photo is going to the curves. First, I wanna mix all the like values together. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna first pull the blacks up a little bit. I don't want to have like hard blacks here and there. I want to fade my blacks a little bit. And I'm gonna take my shadows, pull them down. 
a little bit just a small thing then I'm gonna take my highlights actually pull them down a lot stronger something like that then I'm gonna take my whites and make them even brighter okay let's see what did that do we like faded the like the shadow like the blacks and the highlights we reduced them but then we increased the shadows and we made the whites even whiter I'm gonna reduce the opacity a little bit okay now we'll start it to blend all together one more thing I'm gonna add is a gradient map okay this will help you color everything I'm gonna use this one it's a custom preset I'm gonna click on that blue I'll change it to cyan instead of blue okay so this is what it does it takes the brightest points in your photo adds yellow it takes like the half bright the mid tones adds red and the dark areas it will add that cyan so I'm gonna change this to maybe 10% opacity you see what it is doing and then I'm gonna change it to soft light so we get that effect on the photo okay the last thing I'm gonna play a little bit with the curves I'm gonna go to the curves I'm gonna go to the red channel I'm gonna add some red to my sorry red to my highlights and cyan to my shadows then I'm gonna go to the blue channel I'm gonna add some blue to my shadows and some yellows to my highlight I'll go strong yellows actually something like that so now let's see these three color grading I'm gonna group them let's close and open you see this is like the actual magic that happens it changed the photo completely and it blends everything together because we're adding color to everything so the whole photos are going like in the same direction of color okay but now I noticed I have a problem I don't know if it's if you can see it but I don't know where which layer is it coming from I have here like some sort of a line okay it's coming from here you see that line I'm gonna press Control Z. I have some sort of like a line. Let me open that group from this one, I guess. So I'm just gonna select this, paint black, and select this, paint black. Okay, now it disappeared. I don't know if you could see it actually because like I'm I'm like sticking my head to the computer. Okay, so now we made our color grading to the whole photo. It looks really good. One more thing I'm gonna add is a vignette. How I do that I'll just go to like I'll do it with curves actually this time I'll do two curves layers okay or maybe like I'll show you like the fastest way to do it I'll do one curve layer then I'm gonna take like a, a gradient circle gradient make sure it's foreground to transparent and I'm gonna choose a black color and I'm gonna just like draw some black it's not gonna do anything now I'm just drawing black on the areas in the middle where they should be they should have like some sort of light or something so now you see how my curves look like this is how it looks like this is where I created black black means invisible so if I darken this everything will go dark except where I painted black you see if I make it completely everything is dark except where I painted black so I'm just gonna darken everything okay then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand on that layer press ctrl J then press ctrl I now I did the opposite I darkened only the middle the mask is invert now the white is in the place of black so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the curls and instead of darkening I'm gonna brighten but wait I'm gonna brighten using the highlights no not the highlights too strong I'm gonna brighten using a low point here I don't want it to be like too bright just like I'm gonna brighten a little bit and I can also add a little bit of red or cyan I don't know which color actually is better let's say some red and let's say some yellow let me go to the red let me add it only in the highlights sorry by moving top left then the blue I'm gonna add it only to the highlights also let's actually okay now we're done so this is like some sort of created some sort of a focus point to that area where our model and our like 
horns and the sun and everything. Okay, let's me do let me do one final thing. I just want to try it. I don't know how it's going to look like. I'll go to the green channel actually. This will add either magenta or green. So I'm going to go to the like the highlights and I'm going to add a little bit of magenta. It looks really good actually. I like it. So you see like if you're going too strong, it's not good. I'm going to add just a very little bit of magenta to my photo something like that. I'll try the greens in the shadows. No, not good. I'll just this is like adding the magenta. I don't know if you like you're seeing it's a very small difference, but these small differences are what makes the big difference. Okay, I guess now I'm done with almost everything. However, I wanted to post this on Instagram. So Instagram doesn't like the very white photos because Instagram is more of a portrait look. So I could either use the four by five Instagram ratio. But then I'm gonna like lose a lot of effort I made like let's remove this for now so I don't delete like the outside pixels let's see okay it's looking good this is the perfect ratio for Instagram but I lost a lot of things I did so I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna press clear and I'm just gonna crop it a little bit like that I cropped it actually from here to there this is how I cropped it in my Instagram. But this I'm gonna post it on YouTube so I don't need to crop it. I'm just telling you how to crop if you want to make like your crop. Because most of the people who asked for this tutorial was from Instagram. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna hold Control or Command, Alt or Option, Shift and then press E. Everything now will be merged into a new separate layer. So we can go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Camera Raw Filter is a place which have everything you can do with editing the photo i have a separate tutorial on camera raw filter make sure you check it out if you want to understand the whole camera raw filter thing okay now we're in the camera raw filter i'm gonna increase the contrast a little bit yeah something like that uh let's try lowering the highlights because this this is so burnt out so i'm gonna just lower the whites a little bit and the highlights just a little bit Okay, the clarity, if you increase the clarity, everything is more clear. I don't want that look. If you reduce it, everything is softer. I'll just leave it zero as it is. Uh, I'll darken the whole image just a little bit, something like that. Then uh, I'm going to go to the, like, the FX module. You can either dehaze or haze your photo. Haze will add like fog. Dehaze will remove fog. I'll dehaze a little bit, something like just four. A very subtle thing then I'm gonna add a vignette to the whole thing just a very subtle one something like that then just to see like the before and after I guess it was that one no this one yeah pressing P if I press P this is the before this is the after before after okay I'm gonna press ok and that's it for today's tutorial if you guys have any requests you want like me to do any type of edit I have on my Instagram page or if you like seen any edit you like and you want it just make sure you add it in the comments below just ask me anything you want I'm also like these days I'm working on a beginner tutorials I'm making a tutorials like if it's the first time for you to open Photoshop these tutorials are gonna be from you they're gonna be like published in few days make sure you check them out if you're a beginner thank you